Okay, uh, how's everybody doing today? Uh, today I want to show you just a real quick uh, recommendation for the best portrait lens to buy for the Nikon camera system. Uh, there's there's no one right answer, but there may be a right answer for you. Uh, so so here we go. This is the the quick and dirty. Let's call it. Um, uh, essentially, there's uh, in the portrait focal lengths. Uh, I concern I consider a portrait lens uh, between an 85. It's going to be your short telephotos. Your 85, your 105, and your 135 millimeter lenses. Uh, we'll get to the big guy here in in a moment. But uh, so basically, you've got three focal lengths to choose from, or you can get a zoom. Uh, if you want the best portraits you can get, um, zoom uh, zoom is an option. Uh, generally, the primes do offer some better performance, so that's what I have here. So there's no wrong answers here, but uh, the 85. Let's start with the 85. Uh, this is the 85 1.4 from Nikon, uh, 1.4G lens. Uh, this is probably the best lens that you can get for wedding portraiture. Uh, I say weddings because one thing most people don't take into account when they're choosing a portrait lens is working distance. Uh, the 85 opens up really fast because you're going to be working indoors primarily. Uh, well, at the church anyways, let's say. The ceremony, uh, the rehearsal dinner, the rehearsal itself. Uh, you need a lot of light, but uh, you also can be working in tight a lot of times. Um, you know, it's like the bride getting ready and that kind of thing. Where... A 135, you could barely be in the same room with her, much less right next to her trying to take a picture. So the 85 is the most flexible for that when you uh, when you know when you want a shorter working distance. Uh, the good news is you can when you have a longer working distance, you can still just get closer. It's not a big deal. Unlike a longer lens where you can't get closer. You know, otherwise you're going to be taking a macro shot or, uh, you know, your subject's going to be too big for the frame. So, weddings, uh, general purpose, uh, portraiture, uh, the 1.4G is great. Now, they also, uh, for budget concerns, of course, because we, we've all got budgets, uh, they also make a 1.8G for a third of the cost. And that is a fantastic lens as well. If you've got 500 bucks to spend, I don't think... I think your decision's made. I think you got to get the 85 1.8. Anyway, uh, the the 1.4 does have better bokeh, uh, better background rendering. It is built better. Doesn't squeak when it focuses or anything. It's it's a tank. Uh, so there is there is improvements to make. This is also regarded as one of Nikon's best optical designs. Uh, essentially, the, the most perfect one of the most perfect lenses they make. Okay, next. We go to the VR 105 millimeter uh, lens. Now, this lens is really, you know, it's called a micro lens or macro lens, but what it's really kind of a secret talent is that it's fantastic at portraits. Uh, it is a VR lens, so uh, you've got vibration reduction. Uh, you can take indoor portraits at smaller apertures because it has the optical stabilization, the VR, and you're still going to get a razor sharp photo. I was taking pictures of my nephew's birthday party. He's he was turning two, and um, you know, moving around and everything, and uh, it's it's dark in there, and you know, I got razor sharp photos. I know it doesn't stop the action, but uh, you know, today's sensors you can uh, crank up the ISO a bit, and you're you're still getting excellent results. So. This is a fantastic lens. The uh, focus is fast. Uh, it also, as far as macro, it's, it's dual purpose because it is a macro lens. So you can use it for portraits. You can use it for shooting pictures of flowers or close-ups of anything. And it's going to work great for you. And it's less expensive than all the other options here. So if you, if you were to buy one lens, I suggest a 105. Now it could be the 105 VR or it could be the 105 uh, DC lens. Or you could get a 105 AIS uh, manual focus lens off of uh, eBay or something, one of the older ones, uh, if you want to save some money. 
uh, or if you've got just a couple hundred bucks to spend, you can get the uh, 105 uh, 2.8 or 2.5 AIS lens, I believe. Um, that's a perfectly good lens. Uh, but the the micro lens is probably the most flexible uh, portrait lens in the line. Really nice and creamy bokeh, uh, creamier than the Tokina 100mm that uh, everybody raves about. Um, it's also sharper at 2.8, so you can shoot this wide open. You know, this is a 2.8 lens, but you can shoot it at 2.8 and get uh, professional results. Uh, so that's one thing to note. Uh, a lot of lenses, you know, if they go to f2 or they go to 1.4, but you got to stop them down to 2.8 to get them sharp. This one is sharp at 2.8. Uh, so this really an awesome lens for the money. Uh, now the 135, if you want the absolute best portrait rendering that you can get on your camera, uh, the 135 is the lens for you. This is the DC uh, model, which is a they call it defocus control, but it's really not uh, defocusing. It's changing the, it's playing with the spherical aberration correction. Uh, of the lens to get creamier backgrounds. Um, it is, uh, it's also the most difficult lens to use uh, in uh, of the portrait lenses. They do make a 105 version of this, so that's a great lens too. The 135 is the king though. That is the best portrait lens that Nikon makes. Uh, it's The depth of field is so paper thin that your focus accuracy has to be spot on and you can get used to it. You can shoot it with manual focus or you can do autofocus and um, uh, you may need to fine-tune adjustment in your camera body uh, to get the focus exact but um, once you once you have it nailed it's it's amazing. The best uh, color rendition uh, it's very neutral very pleasing skin tones uh, you get just the creamiest backgrounds uh, it's it's really an awesome lens. Um, it's it takes some patience, but the one great benefit of the 135 DC is that it doesn't just take creamy backgrounds wide open, but you can shoot them at f 2.8, you can shoot them at f 3.5, f 4, and you are still getting creamy backgrounds. That's what's great. the The aperture stays round and uh, the rendering is still gorgeous. Uh, so that's your top dog uh, as far as rendering. Now if you're if you're gonna have two portrait lenses I'd suggest the 135 and the 85. So you've got your indoor short distance lens or uh, you know close working distance and then you've got your outdoor portrait lens to really uh, really knock them knock their socks off. Uh, if you're going to get one portrait lens you know let's say Three thousand bucks is too much uh, to spend on portrait lens. You just want one lens solution that's nice and flexible. Keep your bag light. It's got to be the 105. 105 is a good combination because you can do some indoor portraiture. You know, it's not too long, uh, but it's also long enough to get you a narrower angle of view, uh, really good rendering. Uh, it's just a good all-around workhorse. Um, now, if you want, if if you're like a if you want to be a fashion photographer or uh, you want to produce something that's just completely different than anything you've ever seen, that's when we get into these super telephotos. Uh, so that would be your, uh, uh, this is a 300mm f2.8. Uh, it creams out backgrounds like crazy. Uh, it also gives a bit of a flatter rendition of your subject. It's razor sharp. <clears throat> um, it separates your subject from the background, but it also obliterates your background too. So uh, it costs more than all three of these lenses added together. So uh, you have to take that into account. But also, like the 105, the 3028 is sharp, wide open. They're really optimized to be used wide open. Um, also in this category is going to be the 200 millimeter f/2 VR lens. That's probably the uh, highest performing super telephoto that you can buy for that some people would use for portraits. Honestly anything over 135 I consider a little bit too long for portraits uh, to be considered a portrait lens you know it's it's uh, the 200 is really better for indoor sports and that kind of thing this is uh, good for uh, outdoor sports um, uh, with a teleconverter you can do some birding if you've uh, 
if you're shooting large birds or uh, wildlife but um, but it also has the added ability that it takes incredible portraits so I hope that gives you uh, some some idea of what uh, what the best portrait lenses are and what you might want to buy uh, keep in mind that really any of these focal lengths there are less expensive options that are still stellar performers uh, if you don't mind manual focusing you can get some of the AIS lenses uh, or there's just earlier generations of them uh, like the uh, like the 105 there's an earlier generation that's still a great lens uh, the 85, there's the AFD model you can get for under $1,000 now. Um, you can get the 1.8 versions, uh, still great lenses. Uh, but if you want the best, uh, in my opinion, it's these three right here. So I'll stop rambling on. Uh, we'll see you guys next time, and thanks for watching.